Սերհետ արդո Մանուկյանն է, բարի եկերեք մեր կարնավոր արձանց հայդակիրներում, ներկայությունդերում. This interview will be mostly conducted in English with a, an Armenian uh, patriot, որուն uh, անունը Tony Halepli է, Montreal է, մեր հետ գմինի անայսոր, and we are dedicating this series of interviews with Tony. We will have five or six interviews with Tony. And the motive of this series of interviews is to be, uh, to follow what Tony has done uh, in reviving Violet Store's economy or doing positive uh, deeds to help Armenia, to help Vyotsor's residents, and to help uh, refugees from Artsakh. Tony Halepli is a mechanical engineer, and uh, uh, his work has been done in mostly biomechanical engineering. He has worked as a project manager in America, in the United States, in Canada, and in China. And he has done engineering managerial uh, jobs in European multinational construction and industrial gas plants. He is an owner of a business in in the sale and manufacturing of equipment for food, cosmetics, and pharma plants. He's a successful businessman, but he's a very generous and uh, white-hearted uh, Armenian who's coming to help uh, fellow Armenians through numerous, numerous deeds. I want to invite now uh, Tony Halepli to join us with this particular series of uh, interviews, a series which are uh, promoting how we can be an assistant or helper to Armenia's revival. Uh, Tony, we, you can talk in Armenian and English as well. Parieges, uh, Tony, Shnoragaleng, or Mer Hedes Aisor, for Bessi Hantavares, Mer Jongurta, Yer Tsutsuneste, Kesibes, Bars, Hames, Anska, Inchvesterna, of Luchanas, Mil Mer Hairenikin. Ait Kubodelet, Biduzein, or Zarael, Iprev, or Inak, for Amenhai, Ir Garelice, or Teokne, Gam Investene, Hairenikin. Welcome, Tony. Welcome uh, also, uh, Arto, Sharchach Noragaliam Arto, for your, uh, for you giving me this opportunity to present uh, what we've been doing in Armenia. I want to call this podcast, Podcast of Hope. Arto, uh, our nation is going through some very difficult times, but uh, some people say glass is empty, some they say glass is half full, some they say half empty. I say the glass is half full, but it can be filled rapidly. Arto, as you mentioned, I have at one point lived in China in engineering uh, profession. In my lifetime, I've seen Singapore, China, Taiwan, South Korea progressing enormously. They built this in my lifetime. Why not Armenia? So my message is a message of hope. And I think uh, we can build a very prosperous Armenia. This is doable. Arto, the reason is doable is that we have a well-educated population in Armenia. We are entering completely a new world where know-how is the king. Yes. We have a huge 
potentially in the diaspora. As in the past, you and I, we discussed it's untapped. We want to tap to the strength of diaspora. It's not bragging, but we have a nation that has a mathematical mind, has a chess mind. That's why IT industries have been very successful in Armenia. Very, very successful. And we have other advantages. Uh, for example, the solar potential of Armenia. Yes, we have suffered from lack of oil and gas, but it's passe. The solar panel technology and the amount of money you have to invest for every kilowatt produce is decreasing rapidly. And battery technologies are improving. So we have an energy advantage also coming. Anyway, this gives a quick summary of what are my hopes. Um, well, this is what I have in my mind, and uh, maybe we can move on to the uh, next uh, chapter. Uh, I listen to you, to your questions, Arto. Yes, uh, we will do as planned six uh, episodes of this podcast, but uh, uh, let's start with your uh, uh, how it started and how you got uh, the beginning you were introduced to the uh, Vyotsor through the Terjanian and through the Atken uh, Foundation, Atken Armenian Foundation. Uh, give me the background and the, what you started achieving uh, at least at, pro, at the beginning. Arto, I, I called a, a Vikan Atarian, a friend of mine. I knew that he had a lot of contacts in the Armenian community. I asked him, how can I get involved as an engineer and get my, roll up my sleeves and get going? He said, look, I have another friend called Antoine Terjanian. He lives part-time in Vyotzor. He has a house there. He, this is his phone number. Give him a buzz. So I called Antoine Terjanian and he, he told me, if you want to do practical things, let's do it together roll up your sleeves and move on. And this was the beginning of the end. And I thought, we never looked back. Now we are in our sixth or seventh year. And uh, Antoine uh, has a house in Yerek Nazor, in Vyotzor. Vyotzor is located halfway between uh, Yerevan and Sunik province, South Armenia, it's central. And uh, he has been observing and he had some limited contacts with the local NGO, non-government organization called Sunik Development NGO. He's been observing them and he's been hearing that they are real doers. He said, Tony, let's talk to them, see what we can do together. We had some initial ideas, me and Antoine, and uh, we started partnering with them on uh, beekeeping. And from there on, our activities moved on to many, many, many fields. Uh, I owe it to quite a bit to Antoine and his wife, Sheila another noble individual. Uh, voila, this is how it all started, uh, Antoine. And we are very lucky that uh, scenic development NGO people also are very practical, hands-on people, very, very much present in the villages everywhere in uh, Biotzor. They don't sit in their offices. They are over, been... uh, over 20 years, uh, they are in the business of... Uh... Yes. Uh, Yes, I would like to briefly introduce Unique Development NGO. They've been established in 1995. Currently, I'm on the board of uh, Atken Armenian Foundation of Canada, and also I'm on the board of Unique Development NGO. Uh, Unique Development NGO has about 15 uh, office employees. These are mostly uh, project managers, coordinators. And uh, Sunik NGO has about, uh, provides about employment to 20 people. It's in own orchards and it's a nursery. Uh, we have a cold storage facility, about four or five people work in it. We have built in the last few years, a solar uh, dryer facility. Last summer, about 20 people worked in it. So, it's an NGO that has been very much involved with uh, helping uh, refugees uh, in Artsakh, Artsakh refugees coming to Bayonzor, uh, COVID-19 mitigation. We have a dental clinic 
we have a mobile dental clinic that goes to the villages, to the mountains. Uh, what are this is the in a summary, and we also have uh, several projects in education for uh, the uh, local people in Biotzor. So, Sunic uh, NGO is uh, mostly uh, involved in the sustainable development projects, and they don't. Uh, they are uh, an NGO. That means they are not non-profitable organization. Whatever they get in funds, they invest in uh, the projects that you mentioned. Uh, uh, mostly, mostly in agric agriculture and probably also refugee assistance projects. So what was your involvement and how did you start uh, with the, the trio that yourself with the NGOs, Unique NGO and the At Atken Armenian Fund? How did all start and uh, where are you right now? And how many to in total jobs uh, you have created? I, I think you have uh, seasonal jobs and permanent jobs. Yes. Uh, Arto, I would like to mention that what I noticed in my first visit to Sunic Development NGO was that they were already cooperating successfully with foreign development NGOs. This is a, a real successful uh, way to tap into monies not constantly from diaspora. The SUNIC Development NGO has been working many years very successfully with uh, Swiss Hexapper, a Dutch PUM, German Bread for the World, and many other NGOs. These are very large NGOs, very serious uh, NGOs, and they, they have found a good partner, Sunic NGO, and they request that all our books are being audited yearly. Sunic Development NGO's books are seriously audited every year. And uh, we perfect ourselves by rubbing ourselves to other successful NGOs, and I and I'm sorry if I'm forgetting some other uh, beautiful NGOs that we are also in contact. We get help from, uh, of course, from Atkan Army Foundation, Paros Foundation, and so on. We are Shen. Shen. definitely, def I forgot. We get a lot of agricultural technology help from Shen. We cooperate, we're inclusive. Whoever that wants to come and work with us, we are open. And the same goes for Atkan Army Foundation. I want to say a few words about that Ken Armian Foundation. We are all volunteers. We have zero administrative fees. It, even some of the expenses we paid out of our own pockets. Our only expenses at that Ken Armian Foundation is a uh, couple of tens of dollars that the bank takes from us transferring money to Ayastan. Um, if other people, they want to come and join us in this venture towards a better, brighter Armenia, the door is open. People can give us a buzz to me, to Van Armenian, to Antoine, to Sheila, to you. We're open. We're inclusive. Voila. And uh, uh, what I understand from you, Tony, is that the smallest amount can make a big difference uh, in your projects. Like uh, uh, $50 can buy a beehive. Uh, $70 maybe or 80 Canadian dollars can uh, buy a colony of bees. Yes. Uh, your nursery project, your uh, uh, orchard. Uh, I know that you give uh, seedlings to villagers. Uh, wh wh what was the Viotsor uh, income of these these yes. people, uh, the gross national gross product of these people? Uh, Arto, you asking a very good question. I will not forget the reply to your question, but I want to say that as we're going to do other podcasts on beekeeping honey project, I will mention dollar numbers. What a beehive can do a difference in the life of a village family. We will discuss 
uh, our nursery, what uh, uh, intensive modern tree can do, what kind of change it can do in the life of a village family. We're going to go into all these details, uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, definitely. But not, go ahead. Uh, sorry. No. Just to reply your question. It's very, very hurtful for me, the level of poverty in villages in Armenia. Uh, we're talking about a post-Soviet space. Soviet regime was supposed to be workers and uh, villagers' paradise, but what they left behind in villages is very, very hurtful, especially the border villages. I have been to numerous uh, Nahichavan border villages up in the mountains. The poverty I have seen is disturbing. It doesn't compare to the North America, North Avenue that was built in downtown Yerevan, not comparable. I suggest some of our diaspora compatriots, next time they go to Hayastan, to, of course, visit Gimri, Garni, Yerevan, but also pay a visit to some villages. Um, now, talking about income levels, this was your question. Arto, I did some analysis and I asked numbers. The numbers that I've been given and found is that Vyotur is about 50, 55,000 people. Only one or 2,000 people are living in families where the family income yearly is more than 10,000 a year. The rest of the people... You, you mean dollars, right? Dollars, yeah. So it means out of 55,000, only 2,000 maximum are living with family income. I did not say personal income. I said family uh, income of 10,000 and more. In some of these villages that I visited in the border towns, uh, border uh, villages, the monthly income, not personal, family income is between 50 and $100 a month. It's heartbreaking. So you can understand what one beehive can do, what a modern tree can do with good harvest, and so on. So this is my focus. Uh, let's be honest. Armenia is a net food importer. Armenia is a net energy importer, is not sufficient. Um, I have seen some numbers from World Food Program. I have data from November. Armenia is a beneficiary of World, World Food Program. The data that I have from uh, November is that 212 metric tons of food was distributed by United Nations. Uh, now there's a six months program for the, as of December, 2020, uh, to take care of uh, the food sufficiency of 130,000 people. So we have to roll up our sleeves, the diaspora and get going. And I'm gonna talk in the next session about modern, agri modern agriculture, what kind of miracles it can do, economic miracles it can do. We'll discuss the example of Holland and so on. Yes. Okay. So you mentioned all these uh, different fields that you were involved. Uh, and I understand that you rolled your sleeves and you are working even harder for Armenia than your own business in Montreal. This is really a commending uh, gesture. Uh, I congratulate you. I thank you on behalf of all Armenians. Uh, keep up with the good work, Tony. I'll let you have the last word, uh, maybe something in Armenian because you're very fluent in Armenian. And uh, then we'll uh, finish this first podcast and we'll meet again next week to uh, elaborate some uh, details in each type of project that you were involved in and all of us can be involved as well. Yes, Arthur, we're inviting everybody. We are inclusive. We are inclusive. And uh, I'll give you one example. My brother-in-law, which is a pure Quebecois, is involved. Patrice is my brother-in-law. He's been financing <laughs> beehives and trees in Ayastan. We're, inclu we're inclusive. We want everybody to come and join us. Uh, I have a fantastic American friend that I know many years uh, based in LA. He's been financing, he's been helping us. We're inclusive and uh, we want people to come and participate. If you're a dentist, 
we have a clinic. Come and work. You know, the clinic is already there. We even have a mobile clinic yeah. that goes to the mountains. Uh, it's yeah, well, I tell you, but there, yes. Yes. Mikani yes. or Okne. Yes. Agranere. Arto, that's the whole message. If you're an economist, if you are a businessman, you know, you're a teacher, you're a, you're a welder, you're a tradesman. We need your know-how. And we have the vehicle. We have this unique development NGO. We have the vehicle. Come and join us. Help us. Introduce us to other foreign NGOs. Let's write proposals together. Let's get more financing. This is all doable. Uh, to finish in Armenian, Miasin, Miasin, Miasin. Pida Jovik, Miasin. Shragalem, Tony, Hachort Berhagortman, Virgin Gantibin, I have Lav Lurerov Nezigisharmagis. Shragalem, 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 Shragalem,